Tacoma Power is working on a big project on the Cowlitz River. There are things you can do to prevent frozen pipes, and the Tacoma Police Department is looking for qualified candidates. All that and more just ahead on Tacoma Report. Hi and welcome to this edition of Tacoma Report. I'm Angie Foster. Recently, the Tacoma City Council passed the 2030 Climate Action Plan. Stacey Elifrit has more on how this resolution sets Tacoma on a path towards a carbon neutral community by the year 2050. Tacoma's 2030 Climate Action Plan outlines the city's high priority actions to address climate change. With this plan, Tacoma will take action for healthy, affordable housing, clean, reliable transportation, protections for public health, and good paying green jobs. We prioritize actions based on high impact, equity, and feasibility to be completed through 2024. Um, there are actions such as uh, funding local food projects, building out a complete network of sidewalks, spike connections, and safe routes to school improvements, preserving and expanding healthy tree canopy, supporting programs to prevent waste, uh, partnering to distribute clean air kits, including filter fans, and uh, growing green economy partnerships and resources. This is an ambitious plan that includes numeric targets for 2030. The city will be measuring yearly items like number of affordable housing units preserved, number of EnviroStar businesses, and number of electric vehicle charging stations. The city council declared a climate emergency almost two years ago. And this plan sets out what we need to do to create a better Tacoma for all. We especially want to make sure that we're um, protecting and supporting frontline communities. And those are um, communities that experience inequities in multiple ways. They tend to be underrepresented, underserved, or made more vulnerable. So we really developed this plan to protect all Tacomans, but especially those frontline communities. While this is a city plan, it was written with community input and implementation will need the same measure of assistance. We had over a thousand community members contribute through workshops, serving as climate ambassadors, environmental justice leaders work group was created, um, and surveys. When we look forward now towards implementation, um, we can't do it alone. We're gonna be relying on many, many community partners, businesses, and ordinary citizens to step up. The Pacific Northwest, including Tacoma, has experienced environmental impacts over the past year, including extreme heat, wildfire smoke, and flooding. Climate change brings opportunities too, and I'm more excited than ever about the possibilities. We have new state legislation will bring significant funding and uh, policy direction. And with the um, brand new federal infrastructure funding, we want to make sure that Tacoma is poised to put that funding to good use here for climate protection. In addition to this plan and all the opportunities it brings, there are many ways for the community to get involved. While individual action is important, systems change is probably even more important. So what I what I'm stressing um, to community members through this is to get involved with uh, civic engagement, serve on uh, a citizens commission, really just being civically engaged, I think is one of the most important things that we can do to ensure that we have a better and a climate safe future for all Tacomans. For Tacoma Report, I'm Stacey Ellifritt. In leading by example, the city's climate actions will demonstrate how other organizations can transform their operations to be climate safe. Details about the 2030 Tacoma Client Action Plan can be found on the city's website. The City of Tacoma works with community partners to help manage and protect the shoreline habitat in our community that makes this area so special. While we all enjoy walking the waterfront, we may not always consider the vital habitat role our shorelines provide for marine wildlife, salmon, and birds. Shoreline areas are one of the defining features of the City of Tacoma. Our northern and western borders are surrounded by water. And many of the people in the city of Tacoma and the nearby areas are familiar with the Port of Tacoma area, the downtown waterfront, the Ruston Way waterfront, uh, Point Defiance or Titlow Beach. And these are all areas that we enjoy 
uh, recreating in, and we enjoy the natural features and amenities of these areas. These areas also are vital natural resources. They provide habitat for a lot of the species that we enjoy watching, um, such as eagles, osprey, orcas, of course our salmon, um, sea otters and porpoises. And the shoreline provides habitat and is part of the vital food web that supports all of these species. To learn more about critical areas and how the city of Tacoma protects them, check out the city's tip sheet page. The Federal Emergency Management Agency is preparing to send a mobile vaccination unit to several Western Washington communities to ensure life-saving COVID-19 vaccines are given out to the public quickly and equitably. Through partnership between King County, the state, and Federal Way, the mobile site is scheduled to open December 20th and will operate for about 30 days. Current plan locations include, but are not limited to, the Performing Arts and Event Center in Federal Way. A press release from the governor's office indicated additional sites may be determined. Go to the Washington State Department of Health website for more information. The Tacoma City Council confirmed the appointment of Avery Moore as Tacoma's new police chief during the December 7th council meeting. Chief Moore previously served the Dallas Police Department as Assistant Chief of Police for the Investigations Bureau. His appointment was submitted to council by City Manager Elizabeth Polly and was confirmed by council. Currently, Tacoma Police Department Interim Chief Mike Akey will continue supporting the department until his retirement in the new year. Chief Moore is slated to begin his new job in mid-January. Police departments across the nation are struggling with staffing shortages and Tacoma is no exception. The Tacoma Police Department is working hard to attract and retain qualified candidates of all backgrounds to become police officers for the city. In addition to traditional methods like recruiting fairs and expositions, the department is working closely with Joint Base Lewis McCord, as well as a consultant to help attract more women and people of color to better match the makeup of the city's population. We're on a mission to both protect and reflect our community. So we're looking to find and hire new or experienced officers who reflect the diversity of Tacoma. We are encouraging applicants from all backgrounds to apply. Fortunately, the department is positioned well to attract officers due to the many benefits like a great starting wage, full medical, dental, and vision, a pension, deferred compensation match, tuition reimbursement, take-home vehicles, and much more. If you or someone you know would make a good candidate for employment with the Tacoma Police Department, the department's next test date is scheduled for January 29th. There are also several test dates scheduled throughout the new year. To learn more, visit TacomaPolice.com. Tacoma Solid Waste customers can bring those old, burned out holiday lights to the Recycle Center. Lights and wire are accepted for recycling all year round, but if lights are part of a decorative frame, be sure to remove that and recycle them separately. In addition to holiday light recycling, starting December 26th through January 16th, the Recycle Center will accept unflocked, undecorated Christmas trees without stands. Recycling of these items is located at the Tacoma Recovery and Transfer Center at 3510 South Mullen Street in Tacoma. To find out more about holiday light recycling or Christmas tree disposal, contact Solid Waste Management. Catch the latest episode of Urban Green, playing now on TV Tacoma. This winter edition starts with a look at a project that offers additional capacity to the city's stormwater system in the downtown Tacoma area. The show will then have a mixology demonstration using together. kombucha and other fresh ingredients, and it will share a quick tip on creating an all-purpose cleaner. Viewers will also learn about the materials marketplace and how it's working to create a circular economy. The show will then close out with an introduction to dehydrated meal planning. For a list of air dates or to watch this and other episodes, visit the Urban Green webpage on the city's website. Making its way to customers' homes this December is the Environmental Services quarterly newsletter, EnviroTalk. Get a sneak peek of this winter edition available to view online now. This issue focuses on the Jefferson Avenue and Hood Street surface water interceptor project and shares a tip on making an all-natural microwave cleaner. 
There is also a recipe for a simple chicken bone broth and a feature that gives the full scoop on residential curbside bends. Visit the EnviroTalk webpage to view this edition online today. We're gonna take a quick break and when we return, we'll head to the Cowlitz River to learn about a major project Tacoma Power has undertaken. Stay with us. Welcome back to Tacoma Report, I'm Angie Foster. With the coming of the new year, we'll bid farewell to several members of the Tacoma City Council as well as welcoming some new and familiar faces. Departing the City Council are District 2 Council Member Robert Toms, District 5 Council Member Chris Beal, and at-large Council Member Lillian Hunter. New incoming Council Members will include Sarah Rumba for District 2, Joe Bushnell for District 5, and Kira Daniels for the at-large position. Also, we will be welcoming back District 4 Council Member Katherine Ushka, and last but not least, Tacoma Mayor Victoria Woodards. Visit the city's website to learn more and to sign up for news and other updates from our council members. Major construction on Tacoma Power's Barrier Dam on the Cowlitz River for the first time in 50 years brings numerous agencies together for a critical purpose, to protect public safety and preserve the fish population in the Cowlitz River. As Annie Pansky reports, crews have made it to the halfway point on upgrading the dam that's projected to be stronger, safer, and perform better for another 50 years. Skiffs go back and forth, shuttling construction crews across the Cowlitz River as they race against the clock. I never thought I'd ever have anything like this at all. This is a once in a lifetime project. Timing is everything on Tacoma Power's Barrier Dam Spillway Upgrade Project, making sure they make it out of the river before the fish make it back. This project is all about the fish. It's all about making this structure, first of all, last for another 50 years and then perform better than it has in the last 50 years. The barrier dam stretches across the Cowlitz River just before Tacoma Power's Cowlitz Salmon Hatchery facility. It's a concrete wall built in the river with a channel for fish inside. This is all solid concrete. The dam stops fish from going further upstream, diverting them to a fish ladder. And then the fish will come in here and you can see the opening there. And into Tacoma Power's separating facility, where recovery efforts begin preserving the population. As stewards of the river, um, it's our responsibility to continue to care for the infrastructure that's in the river, the river itself, and the natural environment around it. Initial analysis showed the waterfall effect over the dam had been creating a churning machine, lifting up rocks and debris and slamming it back against the wall. There is scour out there. It's not as bad as the worst case scenario we had dreamt up. We're very glad with the way it was constructed. We're very glad with the way it's performed. It is in a state of deterioration. I don't want to say that we shouldn't be fixing it. We are, but we're going to get, we're going to get more than our money's worth moving forward. Re-engineered, the barrier dam is going from a waterfall to a water slide. We're changing it to what's called an overflow. So we're going to caress the bottom of the water all the way through the dam. This will eliminate the churning, making it safer and stronger. The new shape will also get rid of a pulsing effect that would happen during low flows. When I think clean energy, I think uh, not just the energy we produce and the, and the fact that, that through hydro there's no emissions, but, but also that um, our stewardship of the environment and a project like this where we are investing in really a fishery as a part of that work. With half done and another half to go next year, Tacoma Power is expecting a return on the community's investment for public safety, visitors, anglers, and most importantly, wildlife. For Tacoma Report, Annie Pansky in Lewis County. The second half of the upgrade is scheduled to be completed in the summer of 2022. Don't let the freezing temps this winter catch you off guard. A few minutes of prep work now can save you thousands in costly repairs later. As we head deeper into winter, it's important to protect pipes from freezing, say Tacoma water experts. Water expands as it freezes and can cause pipes to break, creating a flood in your home when it thaws. But there are steps you can take to protect your plumbing. Remove, drain, and store outside hoses, shut off and drain outside faucets, and add an insulated cover to hose bibs. If you have exposed pipes in an unheated basement or a crawl space, you can insulate them using simple foam like this you can get from any hardware store. 
and you can cut it to size to fit any pipe that you need. If you plan to leave your house for the day or longer, Tacoma Water recommends keeping your heater on and setting the thermostat to above 55 degrees. This helps protect the pipes inside your house from freezing if temperatures really drop. For more information, go to mytpu.org slash protect pipes. Don't wait to take care of past due utility bill balances. Tens of millions of dollars are available through several types of relief funds, but you must apply for them while they last. Tacoma Public Utilities customers have additional time to apply for utility assistance before disconnections resume. When disconnections resume, TPU says they will place all past due balances accrued during the pandemic on an automatic installment plan. TPU customers must stay current on their installment plan and new balances in order to prevent disconnection. If you are behind on payments, Tacoma Public Utilities says to make a plan now to pay down your balance and reduce the monthly amount you will need to pay on your installment plan. Call 211 to find out what relief funds you may qualify for. To learn more about your options to reduce utility bill balances and prevent disconnection, visit TPU's COVID resources page at mytpu.org slash COVID-19. The U.S. Small Business Administration recently announced updated guidance for COVID Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program applicants to better serve small business owners in need while funds remain available. Since its inception, the COVID EIDL Federal Disaster Relief Loan Program has approved nearly $300 billion in relief aid. It's designed to better serve and support small business communities still reeling from the pandemic, especially hit hard sectors such as restaurants, gyms, and hotels. Go to sba.gov for more info. The Restart Academy is a resource created by the Washington State Department of Commerce to provide entrepreneurs, startups, and small businesses with free online courses. Topics range from making a fresh start and building stakeholder trust to developing a successful exit strategy down the road. Courses include an online workbook, assignments, and additional links. For more information, visit their website today. And finally, the annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. birthday celebration is scheduled for Monday, January 17th, 2022. This event showcases the winners of the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Community Service Awards. These awards recognize excellence in community service activities carried out by an individual or group and encourage similar efforts by others who want to serve in the community. The city will present this program as a virtual celebration that will premiere right here on TV Tacoma and be streamed live on Facebook on January 17th at 8 p.m. For more information about the event, visit the city's website. That's all the time we have on this edition of Tacoma Report. A great way to find out about the services the City of Tacoma has to offer is by going to cityoftacoma.org. Tis the season for more than gift giving and holiday cheer. Now is the time for the Tacoma Winter Salmon Run. Swimming up a creek is no small task, but guarantees the continuation of the species. Until next time, I'm Angie Foster. Thanks for watching.